Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's program. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, just before we begin, I wanted to ask everyone to make sure that their phones are on mute. Uh, and also remind you that masking is encouraged but not required. And finally, before we begin, I would like to read the Walters uh, Land Acknowledgement. So, the Walters Art Museum acknowledges the Piscataway and Susquehannock nations that originally inhabited this land. We also acknowledge tribal nations, most notably the Lumbee who migrated here, and indigenous peoples whose ancestors are represented in the objects we steward in our collection. So, this evening, it's my great pleasure to introduce Hilton Carter. Many of you are already familiar with Hilton's inspiring work and the wonderful images and advice that he shares on his Instagram account. He's a noted artist, author, director, and interior stylist. A Baltimore resident since 2015, he shares his home with more than 300 plants. <laughs> and he's published three books, Wild at Home in 2019, Wild Interiors in 2020, and Wild Creations in 2021. And Hilton has kindly agreed to sign copies of these books uh, following this talk. Yes, I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you're all here to listen to Hilton, but I just wanted to take a few seconds at the start of our program to explain why we asked him to come to the waters today. So right now, in the Walters' historic townhouse, One West Mount Vernon Place, you can see the temporary exhibition, Majolica Mania, which I curated with Susan Weber, director of the Bard Graduate Center in New York. And Majolica is a lead-glazed earthenware invented in the 1840s, and it was frequently used to contain plants. And it often drew on natural forms in its design. So for example, on screen here is the British firm of Minton & Co's Majolica Garden Pot and Stand, decorated with ferns and foxgloves. And when I first encountered this object, it was in a collector's home in Washington, D.C., where it was standing in the middle of a table full of flowering narcissus and surrounded by bright green moss. And for a moment, I could not make out where the container ended and nature began. So at this moment, I understood that we needed to install one of our galleries shown here as if it were a Victorian conservatory with colorful, large-scale jardinieres, plant pots, and garden seats alongside fake plants. And I should say we cannot use real plants in the museum because little insects might crawl out and start to munch the art. So uh, we used <laughs> fake plants. I apologize for that. Um, so uh, this is a, a, an image of a very lucky find that we had during research for this exhibition. It's a photograph from 1880, and it shows the conservatory of the railroad tycoon, Horatio Victor Newcomb. And to the left and the right of the curtained door, you can see a pair of neoclassical-style pots on tripod stands. And we were able to borrow a similar piece uh, for the show, and it's now installed in the exhibition in front of a blow-up of this photograph. Uh, and while we were thinking about, uh, you know, how to recreate a Victorian conservatory without using real plants, um, <laughs> we knew that we really wanted to ask Hilton if he wanted to come and talk about real plants in real interiors in the current moment, and he kindly agreed. And so I thought that this slide kind of transitions um, really well um, to one of... Um, Hilton's works um, with one of his plant thrones uh, here. And I noticed that's kind of like a Victorian chaise lounge uh, throne that you put into this image. And I'm going to pass the baton to you now. Um, 
but I wondered if you could explain a little bit more about the plant throne and, and why that's important to you. <coughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you, Joe, for <laughs> sitting with me and asking me all the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> um, uh, plant thrones. Uh, well, f for one, I believe most individuals who uh, have plants in their life or in their homes have created something kind of like it already. Uh, there just needed to be a name for it. Um, and I believe the idea for me was uh, an area to find that escape in your own personal space, whether it's a shared space. I've lived in many shared spaces. Um, I live in a shared space now. Uh, and having a dedicated spot for you to uh, take, shed the stress of the day and uh, find yourself uh, in a in a world that can bring about some sort of excitement, some sort of uh, openness to uh, new possibilities, or just the idea of being able to just not think of anything at all, but just be surrounded by these living things that, for most of us, um, bring us so much comfort and uh, ease. So I think that's what uh, the plant throne means to me. But it also is like like creating them. It's a lot about choosing the perfect throne, right? So when you said the chaise is more of a, I would say, a perfect piece for this particular image, um, it works. Uh, but you got to think about the environment that you're building, right? So I have plant thrones in my home now that are with leather chairs or more modern versus this look here. So um, you have to create one that works for you. Yeah. Um, I wonder if we could go back to the picture of the Victorian conservatory because I wondered if you could give marks out a 10 for the plant styling that's happening <coughs> in, in this image. Okay, Joe. <laughs> now, none of you were here earlier when I realized that I need glasses because <laughs> there's a screen that I'm supposed to look at that's right there, and I don't even know what that is. I can't see it, so I'm going to have to turn around. This is a really dark image, Joe. I know, it is. Um, so let me paint a picture. Do I, do I have to uh, critique the plant styling, or can I pr critique the photographer? Because... <laughs> I mean, we've got plants on the floor, we've got plants in pots, we've got plants hanging from the ceiling. It's um, a little too much, Joe. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's a little too much. You, uh, you don't too, like that. Uh, people say there can never be too many plants. I disagree, no. <laughs> um, I think if what I'm seeing is, <laughs> is what I'm seeing, uh, what's in the right corner there is a grouping of Beautiful plants, maybe. I believe that's a lot of plants there. Yeah, that's that a lot. But what I do like is the uh, levels that are being utilized there. When you said there are some hanging plants there, but also I like the pedestals. And a lot of that is happening in the exhibit, which um, to me was always this interesting thing about raising plants higher in a space but not having it uh, as like a hanging plant, but this some s s kind of a piece of art itself um, on a pedestal, right? And uh, the use of the planters uh, here gave not only a, uh, you, you're, you're celebrating the living piece that's in the planter, but the planters were very important in the style of them, the look of them. So uh, that to me is uh, a little bit of the inspiration for what I try to do in my own home and in the homes of others is not only consider the type of plant, the foliage and how it looks, how whether it's going to uh, kind of erect straight out of the pot or it's going to cascade down the pot and how that foliage ties together with the actual planter itself, whether it's with color, texture, 
um, shape. So I think that if I'm giving this a, a grade, <laughs> I'm gonna give it, is this person still alive? Yeah, he's here, he's here tonight. <laughs> he's here right now? <laughs> oh, I'll give it a, a, a B. A B, that's very kind. Mainly, it's a D because of the uh, photo. I can't really see it, but um, I'll give it a B just based on the fact that there's a lot of space that's just being used for just plants and yeah. someone like myself doesn't agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really, uh, what I was really struck by is the, the Victorians were just so into doing this exact same thing of like yeah. just stacking up plants in their homes. And in the exhibition, we kind of get very heady about, oh, this is the re reaction to industrialization and the urbanization of, you know, people moving from the country to the city. Like, what do you, what do you make of my explanation for why Victorians liked plants? And maybe, is, is it different today? Is it the same today? No, I think it's exactly uh, the same. I, you, like you said, the question is, is uh, relative when it comes to now. Um, but I've a, I, I get this question and I'm asked to speak for everyone that lives in cities, uh, people of my demographic or uh, young folks like myself. Um, <laughs> why have people decided at this moment to bring more plants in? Um, I don't know, the thing I typically say is, well, Growing up in Baltimore, for me, I never had a uh, real yard. Um, uh, when I was living in the city uh, until about the age of 10, 9 or 10, um, the backyard and the front yard mimicked each other, just concrete. Um, and you would have to find a park to find some sort of grass. No one in my family really cared too much about plants. We were focused on caring for the individuals who lived in the house, uh, attending to those living things. Uh, when I moved to the county, there was a lot of grass. That was new to me, a lot of trees. But I lived in apartments. My mom was really focused on, again, caring for me, not tending to plants, but she did have faux plants. Um, love a good faux plant. Uh, if you don't have the light or the type of care knowledge, you know, you, you should probably have a faux plant. But um, I think a lot of people moving into cities or living in cities and they're feeling trapped in these brick containers and they walk outside. I mean, you walk outside out of the building here and there's nothing but concrete asphalt brick and uh, they want to feel that connection again with nature. I think that's what we all want. Um, there was, I remember my first time uh, leaving Baltimore and, uh, or I would say Maryland and going on a plane and uh, seeing spaces that were just lush and full of plants and wondering why can't I have that in my day to day? Or why, or why is that something that um, I haven't been given? And uh, I think we, we as humans need that connection with nature. So um, people are bringing plants in and feeling, uh, or filling the void that they uh, have, but also finding that true connection with just being able to feel the real benefits of nurturing something like a plant, right? So yeah. I think that's what's happening. In a sense of community, there's a lot of great people in the plant community who love chatting with other individuals in the community about plants, and that's pretty special. Yeah, we, w we were talking earlier, I grew up in England, as you can probably tell, and <laughs> England is a big, you know, garden country. And I was, I was telling Hilton when I was growing up, my father always used to listen to a, a radio program. It's one of the longest running radio programs in the UK. It's called Gardener's Question Time. And people literally call in with their garden questions and this panel of four people answer the garden questions. And that, that, that this is pre-internet, pre, like everything is pre-Instagram. Do you think people are still awake after you talked about that? <laughs> I, I, I was giving a paper earlier today um, <laughs> where there may have been some... In scenes. England, a show like that would fly here. Yeah. People <laughs> would just turn it off, I think. Uh, I wouldn't. I would be I really think, excited about it. I think people would love it. it Anyone honestly. here would love to hear a radio show where you could call in and Joe would answer your plant care questions? <laughs> That's a really terrible idea. <laughs> 
Actually, I was going to ask for some free advice right now, since I have you trapped here. Um, Go I'm, for it. I'm going to be moving to a new apartment really soon. Yeah? Blank slate. Okay. Where do, where do I start? What do I need where to think do, where about? Where do you start? Yeah. Uh, you start by pulling a compass out. Everyone has a... Maybe you don't have a compass app on your phone. You might not have an iPhone. I don't know. But I have an iPhone and it has a compass app, okay? (laughs) And you find where the light is coming into your home, the directional light. Uh, How is it entering into that space? Now, here's the real question. Did Joe decide to have this new apartment based on the light itself? Because if you're a true plant lover, oh, that's I've, how you... I've already screwed up. That's how, that <laughs> that's how you rent homes and apartments and buy houses based on light, okay. uh, not based on the well, school district. I need to... St- I think I might need to start over. Um, I so, think I need to start over. So I would say you start with figuring out where, <laughs> where the light's coming from, um, and then based on the type of light that's coming into the rooms or the spots in your home, then you can start to figure out what types of plants can... Uh, do well in that type of light. That's where you start. Cool. I, I did notice my apartment is north facing. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good. Okay. <laughs> I'm s- uh, you should have ha- talked to me earlier. Uh, I get we would have qu- never, we would have never moved into this spot. But I'm calling my realtor as soon as I get out of here. <laughs> this is clearly not But I way. can't judge. I can't judge. <laughs> um, north facing light. I mean, there's a lot you can do with north facing. How big are your windows? I don't know how big your windows are, Joe. You might have very large windows, and in that case, if you have large windows that face nothing but sky. The world is your oyster, Joe. Okay, that's what I Or got. the world that's is your conservatory, you're... Joe. I don't know. Like, um, <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of options there. So when it comes to figuring out what type of plants can go well, and let's say your north facing windows, your western facing windows, all those different types of directions and exposures, it also then is going to depend on. You might have a porthole in your western facing window, or your south facing part of your house, or you might have a 12 by 12 foot window. Um, on the south side of your house. That's a nice size window, but it might be facing another building, you know? So it, it's, it, it's all relative. You have to figure out, you have to break it down, and mm-hmm. all of that information is important yeah. when, let's say, you're looking for the perfect plant for your space. Okay. And I do tell folks, you should take that information to a local plant shop. Um, I don't care if you shop at hardware stores or grocery stores, that's fine, um, but shop local. If you know someone that has a local plant shop, support them. Do, do we know someone who might have a local? You might. <laughs> local plant shop? Yeah, I know. I don't know. Where, plenty, do I, where I know, would you recommend I, I go? <laughs> I, know, I know a few good folks. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's what I would say. I think cool, it's, cool. it's important. If you take that information, you're, you're not going to be able to take your north facing window, the size of it, what's happening outside of it, to a hardware store and maybe get someone great to guide you in the right direction for which plants can work well. Okay. If any of you work at a hardware store in the plant section, blame Joe. She's the one who <laughs> put me up to this. So th- my other problem is I have a cat. That's not a problem. That sounds like an awesome thing, it, Joe. I love my cat. She's the queen of my world, but I, I'm worried about plants and my cat. Is your cat eating the plants? She, she does eat plants, yeah. She does eat yeah. plants. She loves to eat well, plants. Well, I, I will say this, Joe. I have a story to tell you. Joe, I met a young lady. She had two cats. I questioned whether I should get into this relationship. <laughs> I had a lot of plants. She had a lot of cats. Um, cats and plants. Uh, you have to make a decision. Which do you like more? <laughs> Thank you, whoever said that. Uh, it is true. <laughs> uh, I loved this woman. She's now my wife. So I had to love the cats. Yeah, and um, I believe it is your, and I really love these cats your anniversary now. today. So it is our anniversary. Up, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Babe, are you here? Hello? <laughs> Should have got a cat. Should have got a cat. No. <laughs> but 
But I she's probably tending like to the cat. No. Can I can I do a terrarium? Do you think is there? No, a I to... think I think what's important is to make sure that the plants that you have for one um, are pet friendly. Uh huh. You know, safe for your cat if she is definitely bothering them. A uh, way to avoid that again, just like our um, Victorian. Uh, plant lover here is to find ways, creative ways to not um, pull plants away from your space because of your cat, but to uh, maybe elevate them, put them on stands, <laughs> using more hanging planters, find ways to be creative and get the plants out of reach of your cat. The one thing I like to do is, or did, um, when uh, we had a, a problem with our cats not wanting to eat the plants, but just being in areas that um, I didn't want the cats to be in. Um, I would fill window sills if you know with as many plants as possible or objects as possible, uh, because once they can't find a way in, they won't jump into that space. So I mean, they look for it. They try to see what they can do, and then uh, who knows? But we're really trying to protect all the living things in our home, so we want to be mindful not only of the cats, but we want to be mindful of the plants themselves. Okay. Okay, well, this is kind of sounding like a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. So if you were gonna tell me why I should negotiate with my cat, deal with the Northern Light, what will I gain in my life if I Ooh. manage <laughs> to pull this off and get plants? Like what's, what's, the, what's in it for me? What's in plants? it for you? Yeah. <sighs> There's so much. There's um, a beautiful paradise at the end of that question there, Joe. I mean, honestly, um, I don't know how, where you guys are in your journeys and greenery, um, but for me, I talk about this in my latest book, Wild Creations. It'll be out <laughs> there. <you know? laughs> um, no, I just think the, the place that I was in before I found uh, my call to be surrounded by plants. Hi, that's, that's Mama Minty right there. Um, I just noticed that she's in the crowd. Um, real quick, speaking of someone in the crowd, this is the um, young lady who would watch my plants the time four years ago when my wife and I decided to go to Tulum to get married. She was my plant sitter. Yay. Um, uh, yeah, so thank you. Oh, the two, the two of them. Oh, you brought your daughter as well. Nice. <laughs> and I noticed that in your book you have some very good uh, thoughts about how to instruct a plant sitter. Yeah. Uh, well, I, post you, post you should ask notes. them what I did. I mean, I tried to break it down, yeah. what, what was necessary, what was needed. I drew everything out, and then I just, you know, I, 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 I have trust in the individuals who are watching my plants. But to answer your question, I mean, honestly, for me, it has fully changed my life. So, um, as a artist, you mentioned some of the things that I've done in the past. Um, I used to work a very stressful job as just a freelance filmmaker. That was my job. Um, it was very stressful, and uh, because freelance is stressful, because every day you wake up and you gotta figure out how you're gonna pay the rent. Um, I was living in Los Angeles, and uh, I was chasing after this dream. Uh, my dream was to be a feature filmmaker. Oh, okay. That was the goal I made for myself. Oh. I'm gonna be a feature filmmaker. And I, um, every day that I wasn't a feature filmmaker, I was a loser. Um, I put that on myself and that continued. For 10 years, that was Whoa, the idea time. that I had of myself. Um, but I worked really hard to try to reach this goal. Um, I moved to New Orleans and uh, I was just trying to figure things out. And in the process of moving to New Orleans, I remembered being in this space that was so lush and felt so perfect and thinking, whatever that was, I will need that in my life now. I just need to figure out what that is. And I started to bring in plants and what I realized was just like when I, I decided to adopt my dog, I made myself very 
uh, ready for the moment. Went and before I adopted a dog, I went and bought a cage, food bowls, all these different things that were going to make that uh, animal, his name's Charlie, comfortable in my home. I was ready for him. And when I first purchased my first plant, I talk about this in Wild at Home, his name's Frank, he's a fiddle leaf fig. I didn't know what I was getting into. I just thought, bring it in, need light, need water, let's make this happen. But there were some difficulties that were starting to take place. And I realized that I needed to be ready for the challenge of care. And it was in the process of nurturing this plant that I realized how to nurture myself and how to nurture the others around me. Plants are like, like pets, right? Um, my dog is very stubborn. So I learned how to be more patient with him through the process of watering plants. You have to be patient with a plant. A lot of people want to throw water at it or they see an issue and right away they're like, oh no, something's wrong, I gotta do something. Sometimes, just like other individuals in your lives, there are things that they are working out and you just have to sit back and watch and be a bit more patient. And that's kind of what I learned in dealing with plants. And when I was, do you say courting? Is that a thing anymore? <laughs> when I was courting my, my uh, <laughs> now wife. Uh, no, when I, was, when I was, when I met my wife, um, long story short, she was my neighbor. Um, I had gone through relationship after relationship. Again, I was a ball of stress. Um, so no relationships worked at that time. But when I met my wife, I was fully into the caring of the plants that I had. Um, I understood these, the idea of change and nuance and understanding what to be aware of. Being more close to plants made me a bit more compassionate and it made me a better listener. Um, uh, Cause again, like I said, when it comes to plants, they do talk in ways that, um, you know, most of us communicate through our actions or through, I guess, expressions, right? Um, the foliage does a lot to let you know what is happening with that plant. So um, if you're someone who is looking to find your true self, and I can only speak from my own personal experience here, um, there's something in the care of plants that will unlock that. So if you can find your way to wanting to put the work in, because it's like, uh, like every relationship, right? It's like, you're not <laughs> you gotta show up, you gotta put the work in. Um, and then that's when you see the real benefits. Yeah. The air being cleaned, the oxygen changing in your space. Yeah. That's not yeah. gonna really happen. That's wonderful. So it's very beautifully put. Okay, I'm convinced. I'm getting plants. <laughs> Joe's getting plants, y'all. North facing window, so <laughs> Joe's gonna have a lot of snake plants. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna ask a really awful question. Is there any <laughs> plant that you've ever failed with? Have you had a fail? Have you had yes, a plant I've fail? failed every, every which way. Um, every plant that you think was a hard plant to kill, I've killed it. <laughs> okay, okay. I've killed a snake plant. I've killed a ZZ plant. I've killed uh, many Chinese evergreens. It's not a, it's a, I'm not a magician. Um, <laughs> just like I said, I stumbled through relationship after relationship until I found the one that worked, right? Until I was able to then put the, the uh, one and one together and, and somehow, sometimes it equals three, I don't know. But um, there are plenty of plants that uh, in my journey I've uh, saw meet their, their end just because uh, I'm, 
I'm working my way through this too, Joe. Yeah. Trying to figure it out. Okay, well, that's good to know. And a lot of it isn't just based on lack of care. Uh -huh, a lot uh -huh. of us kill plants because of over care, right? Um, I was like, no, more. You want more. You want more. Get, you need more light. How about that? <laughs> um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a delicate balance. But I tell you what, uh, through all of it, you become better, right? You stumble over uh, one stone, you're going to look out for the next, right? I, I would hope. But um, I'm a, I'm a, a better uh, plant parent at this stage than I was back then. So um, I know a lot of people will see a dead plant or a plant that's dying and just give up completely. Um, I see change in a plant that is having issues. And then I go, oh, now we're really ready to do this because you, you, you want to be brought back to life, oh, yeah. right? So there's, there's a lot of fun and excitement in that. But um, never, I will say, uh, and you all know this if you have purchased plants, never fall in love with the look of the plant when you see it in a plant shop. Uh, it will ultimately change when you bring it home. <laughs> so, Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's good to know because I think I, I look at your beautiful books and I'm like, oh my God, that's so perfect. You must never kill a plant. I can never. <laughs> no, they're all wide shots. That's why they're wide. <laughs> they're shots like this. I turn the, the yellow leaf around. No, it's, uh, no, there was uh, a conversation I had with my publishers uh, when I made the first book and there was a section about uh, bug prevention to avoid pest and I captured all these images of pest that were on my plants and they were like we can't show pest people are going to be grossed out <laughs> like what they need a clear understanding of what what to look for you know like uh sometimes millibugs can look like little flowers if you're you know if you're not aware of what a millibug looks like and Sometimes people think scale is just the design of their plant. So um, it's important to know that we all go through the challenge of dealing with pests, and we all go through the challenge of dealing with overwatering or underwatering, or you just have no idea what's happening. Uh, sometimes, like that's uh, that's a thing that happens too. Well, that's good. That's reassuring too. That's reassuring. I f I'm feeling better and better about this this idea of getting. We haven't worked our home. way through this clicker, so no, I'm gonna let's start let's clicking. Like <laughs> <laughs> this one I love, and I know I believe this is your creation. Is that right? These test tubes. Yeah. Well, they don't even make the <laughs> test tubes, Joe. Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I wish I had this slide in here, who doesn't know where this creation idea came from, I can share it now because you can't find it anymore. Um, I, was once, I was once given credit for uh, an Ikea hack. And I was like, who's calling me a hack? And, there, and my wife was like, that's a good thing. You know nothing about social media. Honestly, I, had, I knew nothing about social media. I'm not as young as you think I am. Uh, my, my wife taught me everything I know about social media. Um, if it wasn't for her, I would have never joined or been on Instagram as heavy as I was or am now. Um, she taught me how to fish and then I just went fishing. But um, there was a, a spice rack at Ikea. And I don't really, well, I didn't when I was a, a bachelor. I didn't cook much. Um, or I didn't see why I need to have more season, seasons or, or spices than pepper and salt. Uh, so, so I saw this spice rack and I was like, I don't know about spices, but I do know a little bit about propagating. And uh, I would love to make that into a propagation vessel. And I put that in my house. And if anyone you followed me when uh, I started posting about our apartment, I had uh, those spice racks on the wall. Um, then and uh, I was like, you know what? I would rather see something more uh, natural, live edge, and then that's when this came about. So yeah, very cool, very cool. Yeah. So um, I know that you 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 did do a collab with Target. Is that right? I did. Yeah. 
So can you tell us a little bit about what that was like? What's it like to work with a, to be a single, you know, kind of creator who is calling their, their own shots and then work with a really big company like that? Do you have any advice? I think I'm still under NDA, so I probably can't talk about any. Okay. Target. No, I'm joking. No. Um, it's over with. The target thing's over with, so I can talk as much. Do you want to talk crap about that? No. I love Target. Don't get, don't get it twisted. I visit Target, even if they're not selling my stuff. Target's awesome. Um, anyone here uh, from Target? <laughs> uh, get me another deal, please. No. Um, uh, the Target deal was, <sighs> sorry guys, it's one of those things where I'm thinking like, I lived, I grew up in this city. You said that I lived, I moved here in, in 2015. Yeah, I got that from the back of one of your books. Got it, <laughs> got it. I moved back here in 2015. Okay, I right? So I grew up in Baltimore. So when it comes to like, I'm sitting on stage at Walter's art museum. I went to, uh, when I was in fifth grade, uh, the summer in between fifth grade and sixth grade, I took uh, art classes at a community college in the county. I went to an art high school, um, Carver Center for Art and Technology. Anyone here? Someone's represented here. Yeah, these Carver kids in here. I then went to Micah um, hey. and studied more art. I then went to California to get a degree in film. Um, so to be in a museum <laughs> talking about plants um, is, uh, <laughs> is exciting to me, right? I mean, I, this is exciting to me it as is, well. But, but I mean, what I'm saying is, it's <laughs> as a kid going to museums and you know going to the museums in your hometown and looking at other artists, I never dreamed I would be in this museum talking about my own work. Um, so when you're talking about things that uh, have happened in the time that I found my love for plants and caring for plants, it, I'm just very, very fortunate. So when Target reached out about, when Target reached out about collaborating and having a collection at Target, I was standing outside of uh, the home that we purchased. We were standing outside of it, looking at it, and wondering if my wife and I were gonna buy it. And I had this call with them, and they were saying words, but I really wasn't hearing what they were saying. I've done collaborations, branded content with brands before where you know they, they are like, hey, um, we're gonna send you some planters. Can you post about it, talk about it? I was with, with CB2 before. Um, but they, they never wanted to do a collaboration, like a collection. So that's what I thought the whole conversation was. Um, and then I heard something about uh, products and how many products. And I was like, hold up, did you say I'm going to have my own products? And they were like, yeah. Um, we're going to do like maybe 80, maybe 100. We're going to figure that out. And it'll be in a thousand stores. And I was like, hold up, products that are going to have my name on it are going to be in Target stores, and they were like, yeah, and I was like, so how much do I pay you? <laughs> because if you told me I had to pay you, I would probably pay you. Um, but they were like, this time, we'll pay you. And I was like, okay, cool. No, it was, uh, it was amazing. I can't, I can't tell you anything else about it, but it was, I literally thought, wow, that is pretty impressive and a uh, very special moment for uh, my wife and I because, you know, we shop at Target. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a thing that would allow for, um, why are you asking a hard-hitting question? Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I just, uh, I remember, when my friends would share their photos of their kids all across the country, like in the aisles of Target, and I don't know. If, all right, I'm done. No, <laughs> um, no, no. It's it's it's, uh, it's it was special. That's yeah, all I can it, say. Congratulations! It it was wonderful. Wonderful.
And I think I think the key piece of advice there is make them you they pay you is the key advice. You don't pay them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, um when you're when you have the leverage to make them pay you, make them pay you. Absolutely. But yeah. um nothing I tell I had this conversation with my wife this morning. She said, Do you do you like your job? And I was like, of course I do. Why would you ask that? She said, because most individuals who find themselves making their passion their work, they start to not like their job. And I told her, I haven't worked in a really long time. Um, I got to go be on the Today Show, and as stressed as I was, Every moment I went, this can't be, this can't be it. There's Martha Stewart, oh my God. There's, uh, well, I, forgot, I forgot the dude's name, but there's all these people and they're just like here and we're all sitting in this green room and well, I don't have any handlers. Martha Stewart has like seven. <laughs> Where's my handlers? No, um, no, it's like, um, I'm being like held uh, caressed, um, nestled in the, the goodness of the individuals who continuously uh, send out words of encouragement, who send comments, uh, who write comments, DMs, who purchase the books, who show up to events like this. It's, uh, if they didn't close at 8 o'clock, we'd be here until 10 o'clock talking, and I'm sure we got to move on because we have a time thing, but for me it's it's not like the, you said you asked me to do this event and I said yes. That's why, and we, Joe and I talked about the fact, I'm actually not as social <laughs> as people might think I am. I kind of like being by myself, so to my neighbors who are in the crowd, sorry. I, I, I know I seem like a jerk when I'm walking my dog around the neighborhood. I don't like talking much, but if you get me talking about a plant, I will, you got me. You locked me in and that's just, that's just it's, it's something that uh, connects with me, so. Yeah, that's wonderful. I have, I have a PhD in art history, so I'm grateful every day I work. And <laughs> it doesn't seem like work, so yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, well, I, I think we're gonna turn it over to um, the audience now for questions. Um, I always say this every time, we do have people with microphones who are gonna be walking around. You may think that your voice carries in this uh, room. It does not, so please wait for the person who has the microphone to uh, come to you. Um, so yeah, do we, have, do we have any questions for Hilton? I can just about see upstairs. I do see, oh, I see two here uh, in front, and I think some more back there, but maybe we'll start over, over here. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, I follow you on Instagram. I'm right here. I follow you <laughs> on Instagram. I loved your post about your anniversary today. That oh, was thank so you. sweet. Thank you. Um, so I am wondering, um, I haven't been on Instagram that long, so maybe you've already done this, but with your film background, I one of the things I love about plants is when you're able to see a leaf unfurl or in the evening when a leaf like pulls itself up and then all of a sudden your green leaf has a red bottom and i'm wondering if you would ever think about doing time lapse yes i would love to see your interpretation of that uh have i thought to do time lapse uh yeah um i do like the 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 dance of an unfurling plant or a calathea that wants to close up at night and open up in a day, I think uh, is very special. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's something I'm thinking about, um, but uh, I have uh, friends in the community that do it well, so sometimes I just, you know, I, I let others who are doing stuff well do it. So if you know Daryl, um, he's a house plant journal he does a lot of time lapse that's my canadian buddy so uh check him out if you haven't checked him out already you'll see a lot of good time lapse there 
Great, great question. Thank you for those words about my my anniversary. Thank you for that. Another question from the gallery. Hey, hey. I had a question that's totally different, but from Betsy's. There's the, the picture in your sunroom, the um, the table that's in the middle. There's this droopy plant. What is that? And where do I get it? <laughs> I, th that looks like something I could take care of and not kill. So Which one. the plant on the top? No, I got one of those. The, the one on the the in on the gray the gray. Like middle. the curly whirly one. Yes, the curly whirly one. The curly the whirly, whirly one. one. <laughs> this you. one at the on the top there. Correct. That's an air plant. Air. A I R? Yeah, air awesome. plant. Okay, and does somebody who has a new store happen to sell an air plant? <laughs> yes, but I have a staff that doesn't like air plants, which is weird. <laughs> Anyone from my staff here? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything bad about them. No, I love those guys. They, it's weird when people don't like certain plants. They're like, I have a, a, a wonderful uh, manager at the shop. Her name's Autumn. If you ever go in and meet Autumn, she's great. Um, Autumn just doesn't like air plants. Air plants aren't her thing. So, uh, but if you have a cat, they are wow. toxic free. So, air plants are cool around your cat. That's awesome. Do you um, want to say where your shirt? Your, your oh, shop my is? shop. I haven't shot <laughs> my shop. <laughs> it's called Green Neighbor, and it's in Hamden. So, if you're ever in Hamden, please stop by, say hello, purchase a plant if you need a new plant. Is um, it Fools Road? Is that right? Fools Road. Falls Road, yes, on Falls Road, right next to our, uh, our sister shop, Good Neighbor. So get your coffee, get your nice. um, plant stands, your books, your chairs <laughs> there, and then come and sit outside of our plant shop and make it your home. Wonderful. That is so exciting. Okay, I, I love coffee, so if I can combine it with plants, you've definitely sold me. Um, so who, who, oh, we've got someone else in, in the middle near the front here. I promise I'll, if there's someone down there and I'm missing, I will double back. Yes, go ahead. Hi, Hilton. Um, happy Hi. anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Do you think that caring for plants helped prepare you for caring for your child? And in what ways, if so? Thank you for that question. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess the patience thing uh, is there. All the other stuff is just what happens when you have a child. Like I didn't, I wouldn't, even if I didn't learn how to be compassionate or caring uh, when I saw this little individual uh, arrive, all of those, those things just, you're just triggered and it just happens. Um, Never has my never have any of my plants ever woken me up in the middle of the night and demanded to be watered. Um, I think I I wouldn't be here today if uh, that was the case. I would still be uh, chasing this dream of being a filmmaker. But uh, no, I mean every I think I think the. Uh, parenting of a infant, um, you learn so much about yourself and about the person you're sharing that experience with. Um, and uh, I don't know, I don't know if some, some people are uh, perfect for parenting uh, humans versus pets or cat, uh, plants, but um, I'm having a awesome time uh, figuring out how to tend to the needs of this little individual. So um, maybe I'll take a little bit of that and push that towards the plants. So um, yeah, thank you for that question. Thank you so much. Yeah, and any other, oh, I see, so I'm gonna take someone from the bottom here. I have a question in the second row. Hello. Is, hold on real quick. Is there a baby in here? <laughs> Okay, good. Sometimes I hear phantom baby cries. <laughs> and that is the worst. How much sleep are you glad, getting I'm right now? I'm glad I heard a real baby. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Hey, baby. I don't know where you are, but hey. Hey, hey baby. baby. Hi, baby. <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. Who was the question? I uh, brought my real babies with me tonight. Nice. These are my daughters here. You talk about phantom crying. When <laughs> I first became a mom, I had phantom swaying, even when I didn't have my kid in my arms. Like, you just sway, right? I do that still, too. That's yeah. awesome. I love it. Um, so speaking about Target, you said it, how important it was 
for you and how monumental that was. Um, when I found out your collection was coming out at Target, I put it on my calendar so that they wouldn't sell out before I could get there. So it popped up and reminded me to go. Um, but you were talking about shopping local, and I've been to your shop. Uh, Thank you. It's wonderful. Um, but you, you also mentioned um, buying things locally, and I'm wondering if there are other places that you recommend, particularly for planters, because um, I'm always on the, the prowl for a nice planter. Where Great. do you like to go locally? <laughs> Great question. Um, I'm going to stay on the same block as Green Neighbor and Good Neighbor. I'm going to say our neighbor, uh, definitely neighbors. Many of the neighbors in the Hampton area, um, I would say you should visit, but Wishbone Reserve. Um, a lot of the more thrifty antique pieces that I used to have in our apartment uh, were from there. Uh, a lot of compliments of these like hanging planters that were just old and cool. Um, unlike a lot of stuff, you know, you get today when it comes to manufactured uh, pieces. And there's something great about patina. I'm a huge fan of patina, so uh, if you're looking at thrift stores, you can probably find stuff like that. Uh, I know there's always a want for larger planters. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give uh, Plants Alive a shout out there in Laurel. Um, why did I say that? Uh, that, was, that was my go-to spot. Now all uh -oh. of you know. <laughs> Uh, no, Plants Alive is great. They have really large planters there. Now, I don't know if those are locally made, um, but it's a struggle to find nice-looking, very large planters. So uh, they have them there. Um, but honestly, I would say there are so many amazing artists uh, in this city, ceramic artists, sculptors, who, if you have the the time to research them and look them up or to uh, dedicate uh, some of the money that you're going to throw towards uh, a Hilton Carter planter at Target to a local uh, ceramicist, I would say do that. Um, one of my favorites, Whitney Simpkins, she has a personal best. Uh, she makes planters. She sells them at uh, Green Neighbor, but she sells them other places as well. So. Um, that's where you can get custom pieces done, right? So uh, that's what I would do if uh, you have the time and want. That's a great question and <coughs> great tips there. Um, as another question right, right here, if we can. Hi, I have a question um, about plant, hold on. Um, that actually might grow too fast. As far as size, you might buy a plant and it, it, it just is thriving. Um, like my daughter has a cacti and it's just, it's gotten so big so fast that she's just not sure what to do. <sighs> Someone's rubbing in all of their talent. <laughs> 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 what do you do when you just, you know, you're, 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 you're so good at caring for your plants that they just literally just jump out the window? What do you do? <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like a good problem to have. Uh, what you, sounds like you should do is start propagating, start cutting those plants up and uh, selling them to plant, local plant shops. Um, no, I mean, uh, you can control growth uh, based on light, right? So if you're a... Yeah, that's the problem. So I would say... Uh, Diffusing a bit of that light. I don't know what type of uh, light, directional light that is, but um, sheer curtains can, you know, still make a space bright, but it's going to take, uh, in, the, in the film world, a few stops down when it comes to that light. Baby, don't, <laughs> don't make, it's all good. I will come up there and take care of you too. No, <laughs> uh, no I just think, I think it's, uh, it's definitely a good problem to have. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's either pushing it in further away from that window and getting all that good light, maybe putting up some, some sheer curtains. Um, but honestly, it's like, why are you trying to stunt the growth? Why are you trying to stunt the growth? Don't stunt that growth. Let that plant thrive. Let it, let it. 
Yeah, I would say I would say the the propagating would be the best way to do that, so that not only are you uh, continuously encouraging that plant to grow more by making those cuts, but you're also able then to, when I talk about propagation, some of you might not be here tomorrow, but I love talking about propagation because when it comes to propagating plants, you're able to share that passion with other individuals, right? And I know a lot of us have, uh, our plant journey started because someone handed us a propagated plant or someone we love dropped a plant uh, on our doorstep. So uh, that's a good way to think about it. Yeah, and I think we have time for one last question. I see a lady with her hand up in the third row. Well, we're forgetting about people up top. I got to answer this question because she's tried multiple times. Okay, I'm sorry. Well. But no, 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 we'll no. We'll do we, two I'll do two. We'll do two. I'll make it as long as We're not going to get thrown possible. out of here, I don't think. So we have time for two more. Yeah. Hi, I'm just curious how you move these plants. You know, when you, before you got your house, I mean, because that one in the back is huge. You have to rent something separate for that. Um, no, well, I moved that plant from New Orleans to Baltimore. Um, that's Frank. He moved around a lot. Uh, yeah, that's Frank. Say hi to Frank, y'all. No. <laughs> hi, Frank. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's uh, it, how do you move uh, large plants or plants in general? You have to be very delicate. Um, you have to be considerate of what's happening with the actual foliage and how you're going to place that in a truck. Frank moved in a uh, large U-Haul truck by himself, um, wrapped in craft paper, tied up with gardening Velcro and then craft paper and uh, the pot. Um, what happens is that's a ceramic pot. The one thing I would say is when it comes to plants, this is going to go too long. That's why we can't do this. No, that's okay. Okay, really it's quick. Okay. When, it comes to, when it comes to bringing plants into your homes, especially for someone who isn't, uh, planted in a spot where you know you're not moving anytime soon, uh, what I learned was to stop putting my plants in these heavy ceramic pots so that when I moved, I would have all of this weight to carry. I would just leave them in their nursery pots, and as that plant started to push roots out of the nursery pot, I would put it in a larger nursery pot and then inside of the, the nice decorative ceramic pot, right? Um, that's something that you, sh you don't have to move your plant into a pot, uh, or a bigger pot, I would say a more decorative pot. You can always keep it in a nursery pot, but you always got to be considerate of the roots. Anyway, I would wrap uh, the nursery pot or the pot itself in a big bag, plastic, tie it so none of the soil would spill out, and then uh, be as careful as possible traveling from one spot to the next. Great question. Um, and also being considered of the time of year as well. Um, I'm going to get to that question. I have to, but I will say this really quick when it comes to pets and plants. Uh, when I was on my first book tour, uh, I went to Houston, and Houston is really hot. And uh, a nice young lady wanted to uh, bring her plant to the event for me to look at. She was very concerned, and I love that. I very concerned for a plant. She was very stressed. Her plant was dying on her. And she wanted my advice on how to help her. But this event that I was doing in Houston was outside, and uh, everyone was waiting for the event to start, and she comes up to me, and she talks to me about this plant and how it's struggling, and she really wants my help. And I'm like, oh, great, I can help you out. Show, show me the plant, like show me a, a picture of the plant on your phone. And she's like, no, no, it's in my car. <laughs> and we had been there for like 30 minutes, and it's like 170 degrees in Houston. Um, and that plant was like almost dead uh, at that point from being in that car. So when it comes to uh, moving plants, you've got to be considerate of the time of year you're moving those plants and how far you're going. So if you're moving plants, even for a short distance, they're coming outside into really cold weather, you have to protect them. Uh, they are living things as well. Let's get this question in. <laughs> okay. So I'll be succinct. As a person who loves plants a lot, um, but consistently kills them through over and under care, <laughs> what are some practical disciplines you recommend putting in place to help people consistently and carefully care for their plants? That's a great question. Um, I think many people can relate with that. Um, being aware of what you have the ability to care for. Um, what I did learn uh, through my tour for Wild at Home was that the 
information that was being pushed out there for creating a lush environment in your home uh, maybe gave people a false idea of what it would take to care for all the plants they were bringing into their spaces. So a lot of people were thinking about this number. They needed to reach a number to uh, feel that they achieved something. They're like, oh, I heard Hilton has 300 plants in his apartment. I gotta get 300 plants and then it'll feel good in here. Yeah, well, Hilton doesn't go anywhere for work. He just rolled his plants all day, right? <laughs> you know, like when you go into a plant shop, those plants look good because they're being taken care of by professionals. There's so much wonderful light there. When you're bringing plants in and you're pushing to add more, you are now giving yourself more work to do. You have how many cats? One cat. One cat. Would you like 10 more? No. Probably not. <laughs> So when it comes to plants, you gotta think about them like that. That's a life that you now have to care for. Um, and now you're adding more and more to your, to your uh, schedule, but also to your workload, right? So first things first, understand how much time you can dedicate to caring for the amount of plants you have. Once you understand that, then you have to do almost like a daily check-in because when it comes to plants, it is a listening and a l visual thing. You check the soil, you look at the foliage. It's really, it can be very simple. It can be really hard, but you check the soil. But you're checking the soil because you are very aware, fully understanding, Irena, what type of plant you have. <laughs> you gotta know the name of your plants. You have to know what type of plant you have so that you can do the research on where, what moisture level that soil should be so that you can water it again when it gets to that point. Because as some, uh, there was a story someone told me about uh, their grandmother, she knows when to water a plant by knocking on the pot, by the sound of the pot. And I was like, that's next level. Like, that's, that's where I'm trying to get. I, could, I saw my mom like knock on like melons she can go, oh, this is ready, but, not, but that's work. That's years and years of banging on a melon. That's years and years of banging on uh, planters to hear the sound of soil. Um, uh, so it takes time. Don't, um, don't be too hard on yourself, but don't think that you know, you're fine with it. Just be up for the challenge, put in the work, because you have decided to bring uh, living things into your home and they need that type of care as well for you too to uh, uh, benefit and thrive. I think that's a good spot to end on. I do, thank you. I wanna say just thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for these just in incredibly generous insights and I want to wish you a very happy anniversary. Thank you so much for coming on this most special day. And you are going to stay with us for a little bit longer to do some book signing that's going to be up in the Santa Street lobby. So thank you all for coming. And thank, thank you. Guys. you. That was great. <laughs>